There are those who would say that the story which follows could happen only in a dream. Regardless of where it could happen, this is the way it did happen. The story involves Bill Dudley, a mighty darn good wholesale bakery salesman, a character named Red, who actually is nothing more than a file clerk, and one named Whitey, who is similarly employed, so to speak. It all starts in this rather strange and out of this world office, which keeps the sales records of every wholesale bakery salesman on earth, or so the story goes. Whitey is entrusted with the records of good salesmen. Red, the other kind. Now it seems that Red and Whitey never see eye to eye on matters. Naturally, this leads to many arguments. Our story opens in the midst of one of them. Must you beat on that confounded thing all the time? I am not beating. I'm playing. Well, whatever it is, it sounds awful. You just pee because another bread root salesman has been transferred from your record to mine. Bill Dudley. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get him back on my records again. He's my kind of a salesman, that boy. Down, down, down. Marvelous record. <laughs> but uh, what about this? Which, of course, is the reason he's now in my ledger. Gee, strictly a temporary condition. Why, at the slightest excuse, he'll slip back into his old habit of taking life easy. The way a smart salesman should. You're talking through your horns again. Wouldn't want to make a little bet on that now, would you? Like what? Oh, say... A new set of asbestos points for my pitchfork against... A new set of strings for that thing. Mm, on the level? Strictly on the level. Of course, if you're afraid, it mm -hmm, might... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't frighten easily, do I? Well, now... Suppose an attractive young lady were to ride the route with this Bill Dudley. Say she's a magazine writer and is after material for an article. Say she makes fun of the way he works. <laughs> That's all it'd take to get him back into my way of selling again. You think so, huh? I'm willing to bet on it. Hmm. So I gather. But uh, how could we up here fix it so that a, a magazine writer down there... Oh, no. No, not me. Why not? The trip will do you good. Hmm. Of course, I haven't been down there in a long time. Even on business. <laughs> That's the way to talk. <laughs> and perhaps, as a little added distraction from his work... Hmm, yes. But perhaps something a little more... Uh, hmm. Or perhaps even... Oh, no, don't you dare. No magic and no miracles. It's against the rules. If I go, I'll go... like this. How dull. All right. Is it a bet? Hmm. All right, it's a bet. I'll put this Bill Dudley to the test. Let me see if I got this whole thing straight now. You're a writer. Mm-hmm. And you want to do an article on modern food merchandise. That's right. And the boss said it was okay for you to write with me today. Uh-huh. Well, it's okay with me then, but I'm sure I have a tough time making my wife believe this one. Mm, well, so would I. Come on.
Well, that's how Whitey started out to prove her point. But Red was not far behind. Hey, you're not down here just for the ride, you know. Start working on the guy. We got a bet on. Hey, you know, this seems to be an awfully dull job that you have. Oh? What gave you that idea? It wasn't my... I mean, uh, well, after all, it is just a delivery man's job, isn't it? Young lady, take it from me. Any guy who thinks this is just a delivery job belongs in a coal truck, not a bread roof. Sit there. I'll be right back. Well? Well, I told him I thought he was a dope not to work it to be the first one in every day. Good. I told him I thought all this push on getting good displays, just a lot of front office talk. Couldn't have phrased it better myself. Why keep a close check on how your load's going, I said. You can always dump it on the last half dozen stops. Excellent. And what did he say? Nothing. That's the trouble. He just sat there listening and looking very thoughtful. There, you see? What did I tell you? My bet's practically won. Gee, you know, I would have sworn that nothing could make him slip back into his old selling ways. Uh-oh. Hmm. Must be new on the force. Okay. You've talked, and I've listened. Now it's my turn. I talk, and you listen. First of all, take a look. A loaf of bread. An important food, a healthy food, and a basic food that can be served in more than a hundred different ways. And give a look. Not just one kind of bread, but a whole variety. And not only bread, but a whole variety of all types of baked goods. Are you, by any chance, trying to say that you think this business of yours is important? That's exactly the way I feel about it. Uh-oh. There's something about that guy's tone of voice I don't like. But just because we're important in the food picture doesn't mean a guy can sit back and take it easy on this job. Why not? Well, because folks have to go to stores to buy my stuff. So? So, in these stores, there can be as many as 3,000 different food items that are just itching to latch on a part of their food money, including a few other brands of baked goods. So it's one great big scramble. Up and down the aisles the shopper goes, and what you'll buy, Nobody knows. For sure, that is. But every food item tries to make the grade by looking so doggone good she just can't resist buying. Appetite appeal, we call it. And how do you get it? That's just what I was going to ask you. Well, one way is to let the shopper see the actual product. Yes, sir, you can write this down in your notebook. For making the best impression, Nothing beats seeing the actual product. Now, one way to get it is with modern packaging. But that's not all. Now, for best appetite appeal, you also have to have good displays. Displays that sell. And believe me, top salesmen are using all the tricks in the book to get them. Tie-in displays with go-together food products. 
meal suggestion displays, and a lot of others. So when you stop and think about it, this job of mine is anything but dull. But still, doesn't it get monotonous doing the same routine things every day? Uh-uh. Every day is different on this job. Every store is different, depending on what bullseye I'm working on. Bullseye? Sure. You know, a while back I decided this could be a better paying job if the guy used his noggin. That's when I set up three bullseyes. Here they are. Grocer goodwill, plus volume, and selling displays. The things I'm aiming for in every store on my route. Anytime you can do something to make yourself better liked in a store, or up the volume in a store by even one loaf of bread, or get a new display idea, can mean more dough. I'm just crazy enough to like the feel of more money. That's why I keep aiming for those bullseyes. Well, we better wind up Nellie and get going. Huh. It's jerks like that that end up as supervisors. <laughs> When I first started on the route, I acted like it was nothing more than a delivery job. Take this grocer goodwill business. Know how I used to go after that? Why, I used to go into stores and slam doors and... Hiya, duffy old boy! How's the old miser today? Counting your gold again, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Duff. No harm done, huh? See you again, Duff. <laughs> it must have been all. Well, maybe it wasn't quite that bad. Anyway, today I go after a grocer's goodwill a little different. I'll show you. Good morning, Mr. Marco. Good morning. How are you today? I'm a feel lousy. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, something new. Say, these are pretty slick. Uh, you noticed that, eh? Sure did. Yeah, I bet your customers will go for them, too. Uh, with my customers, maybe yes and maybe no. Uh, we'll see. Go on, you know doggone well they will. Be right back. You see? I want every grocer on my route thinking that Bill Dudley is okay. Never slams doors. Always seems friendly, always got a smile. Always interested in my store, treats my place with respect. Never slams his trays around or makes a nuisance of himself. I like to do business with salesmen like that. Believe me, building up goodwill is important. Without it, you get nowhere in selling today. Look, why don't you stay here and rest a minute while I go in and check the sales? Don't run off now. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. I don't like the way that guy's yakking. I do. You would. Uh, if you want my opinion, he's in a rut. Oh, well, if you want mine, he's in the groove. Uh, thanks for the match, lady. What, Matt? Oh, yeah. oh, yes, you're welcome. Haven't I seen that guy before somewhere? Now, I was going to tell you about the second bullseye of mine. Plus volume. One way to go after it is to use this and this. What's this? That, my young lady, is my business Bible. I've got a complete and up-to-date picture on every stop on my route. I know exactly what sells in each store and what doesn't. I know what new items I've tried in each stop. How each one is done. No guesswork. The facts are all there, and they're up to date. Well, team up these facts with a little bit of this, and you can go out to plus volume without the risk of getting stuck with a lot of returns. So a guy gets returns, so what? Let the boss worry about him. 
Here's something else a fella can do to get plus volume. Watch me in here. Say, Mr. O'Connor. Yes, Bill. I'm uh, putting in a half a dozen of these new sweet doughs. They were never so good last year we're running them again. Since it's a good profit item, I'm sure you want to keep an eye on them, see how they're going. Here's a sample. See for yourself how good they are. Oh, thanks, Bill. You see, talking it up is another key to getting plus volume. You can get in a good plug when you introduce a new package, a new product, or a special. The more you talk it up, the better chance of getting him to push it. But what was all this mumbo-jumbo business with so many of this at so much and so many of that at so much at the last door? Oh, the count check. That's something I always do before I put the stuff on the shelves. Avoids mix-ups later on. And this is especially important in big bakery departments. You see, in supermarkets, there are a lot of bakery salesmen coming in. And the count check also reminds the grocer of what baked goods of mine he's got to sell. The better he knows my products, the better chance of getting his help in selling them. And that makes for plus volume for me. And then there's that third bullseye of mine, selling displays. You know, that can be a little rough. You see, well, take this route of mine. I've got all kinds of bread racks and display shelves. Some of them are pips. I guess other guys' roots are the same way. I used to give up easy on displays. I had only one rule I followed. As long as the stuff didn't fall on the floor while I was there, it was okay. No more, though. And believe me, there's no trick or mystery to building good selling displays. Just stack the bread so the brand name shows best and shows off the bread to best advantage. And give the specialty loaves the best display space. And don't squash bread to get it in. If a store is selling more bread than I got room for on my display space, I talk to the grocer about giving me more room, say, near the checkout counters, or around the counter next to the register. Now, baked goods are impulse items, too. So I always display them as near eye level as I can, so they're easy to see and easy to reach. When you figure a shopper spends an average of only 35 seconds in a baked goods department, there's not much time for your display to work on them. So display it within easy reach, group the items together, keep from burying any item out of sight. But you know, a lot of the other bread boys are doing that much. So how do you get the jump on them? With special display and promotion ideas. Take the other day. I noticed the stop on my route was running a special on hamburger. Okay. So I talked the grocer into including rolls in a special display next to the hamburger. That's where getting goodwill pays off. If you got the grocer's goodwill, you can get extra selling displays in a store built around special promotions. Picnic displays, especially good just before holidays and weekends in summer. School lunch idea displays, especially good in fall better breakfast displays, or any others that tie in with national promotions. Seasonal promotion displays, fruit cakes around Thanksgiving and Christmas, hot cross buns and Easter cakes at Easter time. Displays that suggest ideas for all types of entertaining. And I use all the banners and cards and streamers or printed promotional material I can get. Anything to give any display more sell. But all this talk of mine boils down to just this. This is a tough business, a mighty competitive business. But for the guy who aims for grosser goodwill, plus volume, and selling displays, there can be a darn good one, too. Well, now, that was quite a speech. Oh, I'm sorry if I bored you. I... Bored me? Oh, no, no, quite the opposite. But tell me, how in the world do you get all of those things done? Oh, the whole secret to that is taking it in small chunks. 
Maybe one week I'm shooting for special displays in 10 of my best stops. Next week, 10 more, and so on. After all, that's only two a day. Or maybe my goal for this week is to spend a couple of extra minutes in my biggest volume stops just to work on goodwill. Always got something cooking at a few stops. Always something aimed at one of these bullseyes. Grosser goodwill, plus volume, selling displays. And are you sure nobody could unsell you on these things? Not a chance. I like the payoff too much. Well, don't you ever slip up? Sure, I'm just as human as the next guy. That's why I keep these bullseyes handy. So that a small slip up doesn't turn into a big trip up. Well, off to the races. What do you say? Grosser goodwill. Plus volume, selling displays. Okay, so you won a bet. But Bill Dudley's just one guy. Oh, well, uh, maybe I better drop down and see some of the other fellows on your list. Oh, no, you don't. After all, that was only a bet. But from now on, I'm going to keep a pretty close watch on these guys. Mm-hmm. And so will I.